What up, players? It's Warboss Tay up in this mug. Welcome to my Warboss level paint job for the Corn Blood Warriors for the Blades of Corn or Corn Bloodbound faction for Age of Sigmar. To get your miniature up to a tabletop standard, we're going to hit it with a base coat or we're going to prime it first and we're going to paint all the base colors on every part of the model. Then that's going to be it. While this guy's drawing, <laughs> drawing, while this guy's drying, you're going to move on to your next figure down the line. Just assembly line all 10 of your models in your unit. And uh, by the time you get to the end, your first guy will be dry and ready to go. In order to get your miniature up to this standard, you need Mephiston Red Citadel Spray Primer. Or if you're going to prime your model using any other color primer, then you're going to need Mephiston Red. You're also going to use Lead Belcher, Dryad Bark, Abaddon Black, Rune Lord Brass, oops, Igor, Igor quick, get me my Rakarth Flesh, here you are master, and for your shades you're going to use two, Agrax Earthshade and Raiklin Flesh Shade. Very easy to get it up to this standard and uh, I hope you stay tuned to the end. If you're just interested in having my video play while you paint along, I'd love to be able to do that, keep you company on your painting sessions as we work our way from the plain, boring, unpainted gray plastic to finished armies. Let's stay tuned and let the games begin! The first step we're going to take is spray priming the model in Mephiston Red, the Citadel Games Workshop color, and it's very good to have when you're painting a corn bloodbound army. You want to make sure that you turn the model as you're spraying it, spray in short bursts rather than holding it for one long protracted um, application, and then you're going to let the model dry for about six to eight hours. All right, now the primer is dry and we can get on with the business of painting our Blood Warriors. The tricky thing with Blood Warriors or any model now that doesn't have completely identical sculpts, such as your Cadian Stormtroopers, is that all of them have different detailing on them. So you're going to have to plan your painting accordingly. The way I'm going to break down this painting guide is in steps. The first step is we're going to paint Abaddon Black on the boots as well as any parts that are eventually going to end up being silver. So that's the chainmail and the weapons. Now if you're painting your guy with the spiky fist, I would paint the whole thing in gold, or in rather black rather, because most of it is going to be in gold but some of it will be in silver and it's good to get an idea, get an idea of where all that coloring is going to go. We're going to start with the boots. And when you're painting any model in a squad where you're going to be using the same technique, pretty much replicating the same paint job, but you're also having to look ahead at the, the detail on the, the faces or the weapons to figure out how you're going to be painting the different variations, it's always good to have a basic formula that you follow which will allow you to focus on those details when you're just knocking these out assembly line style. Remember, this tutorial is to get these guys up and painted as quickly as possible, so we're not going to be worried too much on smaller details we can just bypass. 
So the reason why we're doing the silver in black first is because we want to make sure that when we paint the silver on top of, if we painted it right on top of the red, there's a good chance that you're gonna have some of that red detail showing underneath. It's not too bad for the chain mail, but with the axes, it's always good to just give yourself a little bit more of a undercoat for what will eventually be the silver. Then we're gonna take our black and the last thing we're gonna do is paint the silver axes. The axes are gonna have gold trim. So we're actually just covering the red with a nice even coat of black. And just so you guys know, while I'm making this full-time tutorial, this real-time tutorial, I'm also making a quick guide for people who want to skip the live painting and just look at the paint formula and hear a quick rundown of how I would paint these models. I've been listening to some tactics podcasts and videos on YouTube and some people still think that corn is a pretty pretty viable list to play corn bloodbound and this guide should get you working on your corn models having them painted up fairly quickly all right we're gonna let that black paint dry and while we do that we're gonna be moving on to our rune lord brass So I'm going to start actually from, I like to work from the bottom up. So I'm going to start with the knee pads or the leg armor rather. I'm going to let that black on the chain mail dry just a little bit more before I tackle the back torso piece. And we're going fast. So any mistakes you make in this tutorial, I want you to know that it's okay. That's the front, the leg armor, and the torso piece. Move to the back. Don't forget to paint the uh, all of the different surfaces of the armor. I like to paint the top little strip right here in gold, or brass rather, and then just work your way down. The most important lesson at this point is do not go back to paint the red. Some of us might be a little a little stickler like for the making sure that we have everything painted correctly and we have no paint where it's not supposed to be, but believe me, the minute you slow down to go back and fix those red areas, your momentum is just going to halt, grind to a halt. We don't want that. When you're painting the crest of the helmet and you're painting all the gold areas, it's easy to forget that the helmet itself has lots of surfaces that should be this brass color, including the tops here. as well as the insides 
of the banding. And when painting any kinds of marines or chaos figures where they've got this shoulder trim, that really the best way to approach it is to just dive right in. Don't be afraid of making any mistakes and getting that gold color on the actual red of the armor plate. Having some kind of handle to put your miniature on is a big help as well. So what I'm doing is I'm finding the uh, back of the collar here. Looks really good in gold. Yeah, remember the goal with this first Art is we really want to just paint these guys up as quickly as possible. And uh, don't forget these arm pieces. drive yourself crazy if you are thinking about all of the little mistakes you're making at this point. You can't really see what the end result is going to be unless you're really good at visualizing. So this point is, this part is just more for getting the colors onto the model. I'm not stressing about it. That is all the gold areas we're going to get for now. So now we're going to go on to the lead belcher. If you find that the lead belt or the Abaddon black you painted on the weapons is still drying, not to worry, you can come back to it. We have a lot of silver to paint first. So you see if we don't get the, that lead belcher silver paint into the cracks and crevices of the chainmail, you can see that black paint peeking out from underneath. And that's why we painted black first. See a little bit of a little bit of prep work on all of these chainmail pieces really saves you down the road. I'm just going to go in and start painting all of the silver, or all of the metal really, silver and gold. We'll be able to fix it up later on the weapons. Igor, in frame. Sorry, master. It's been so long since you filmed the tutorial. Ah, yeah, you see, the black on the weapons has not dried yet, so... As soon as the silver touches it, it starts mixing. So I'm going to try to avoid the wet areas. Just really focus on hitting the parts of the weapon that are dry. If it's not dry, I'm not going to stress out. Like this area is still wet, so I'm going to just move on and come back to it later. It also helps if you're painting with a nice bright lamp because that will usually help the drying process. On the other hand, it helps the drying process, so if you make a mistake and the paint is still wet, usually you can go back and fix it. But once the paint is dried on, say from having a nice bright lamp, it's a little bit harder to do. Okay. So 
So the good thing about having an assembly line of miniatures to paint is that once you're done pretty much with one figure, you can move on to the next one. If there's a little bit of paint from the previous step that hasn't dried yet, you can set it aside, paint up, say, the silver or the gold on the next model down the line, and come back to it. In this case, we're going to leave it here. We're going to let it dry a little bit more, and I'll fix it in between takes. At this point, we're going to take dryad bark, and we're going to paint the arm bindings. We're going to paint the wrappings on the weapons, and we're going to paint the belt. We'll start with the belt because it's kind of tricky to get at. So the easiest part to access the belt is from the back. Just do a nice straight horizontal stripe across. A little bit too much on my brush there, so. My biggest tip for this model, now that I'm seeing it start to come together here, is uh, never be afraid. Once you lose the fear of making a mistake, you have your blank canvas, right? Your miniature is built up, it's primed, but you haven't really started painting yet. This is kind of where you see most people's armies when you go to the hobby store. They built up their models, maybe they've got the primer on, maybe even a couple of colors, but they just have not really painted the model at all and it just stays that way. I'm going to paint the wrappings on the weapons next. In fact, when Indomitus came out, one of my local stores, they do display boards at the front of the store. For a long time, the Indomitus said as soon as they got it, they had it unboxed, built up, and unpainted. And I remember thinking like, oh man, I would love to paint these models, have my painted models standing there on the board for anybody who walks in to come look at them. And there, <laughs> the staff said, oh no, uh, we've got people we're working with who are gonna paint it, so there's no need to worry. And uh, yeah, they're still unpainted. And now they moved it to the back. They've got some other display in the front now, so they're still unpainted, just primed. And I think it's because they're afraid of painting the, painting the models. So never be afraid. Next up, we're going to take Rackarth Flesh. We're going to paint the, any exposed skin so you can see the face. It looks like he's screaming. Also, you'll notice the arms are pretty visible. So we're going to paint that next. So moving on to Rackarth Flesh. Not sure how much of the face you could see, so I'm going to just take my best guess Put it all in there. Uh, I think with these, actually with these models, you can also see their fingers. Are exposed. Now we're going to go in the back. Watch out because they've got shoulder armor, shoulder pads. But their skin is visible above the shoulder pads. I think I forgot to mention this in the uh, quick tutorial, but some of these models also have skulls or bones dangling from their armor, so that you would also paint in Rackarth flesh. For this last step, we're going to take gold and silver and work on the details of the weapons. So we're going to take first our silver, which is lead belcher. And if your model has had the uh, silver part being too wet with black paint to work with before, now's the time when you would fix that. Just get the lead belcher paint on and work it all the way across the blade, there you go, on that side, and across the back there. So you have to make your own judgment calls because for a lot of these weapons, they don't have similar banding. You have to kind of figure out for yourself where the gold detailing is and where the silver detailing is. 
looks about right. And the last step in this process is the Rune Lord Brass on the banding of the weapons. Silver with this gold detail on it. It's very, very good to look at. Okay, you can really see that that lead belcher on his right axe is very, very prominent still. It's very wet. So I'm going to just mess around and fix up other areas of the model. You really shouldn't be doing this, what I'm doing right now, because if you're working on assembly line painting your models, you don't want to stop to do this backtracking work but I'm gonna take a minute and do and do just that just so everything looks a little bit cleaner my street cred doesn't go completely out the window all I really want to paint with this lead belcher paint is the corn insignia here Now at this point, you have a choice to make. You can either go and backtrack and fix all the mistakes you made with your Mephiston red paint, going back and forth to uh, fix any gaps or any parts that you might have painted accidentally with the wrong color, or you can move forward to the next step. Personally, I wanna move forward, so we're gonna put this model aside and let it dry. If I'm working on an ent entire squad of Blood Warriors, he would be dry by the time I get to the end. So we're gonna pretend that he's the last guy in the line, in the assembly line. He's uh, still wet and the other guys are all ready to go. So what you would do for this last part of this first tutorial is take your Agrax Earthshade. Very important, the entire model has to be completely dry. If you're not sure, I would even suggest waiting, letting the models dry overnight. And then when you're ready, take your Agrax Earthshade the next day and slap it on the model. Paint the whole thing with Agrax Earthshade. You can see for now, I've made a bunch of little tiny mistakes that are easily fixable. Unfortunately, if I go back and fix them all, it's gonna add up, especially if I'm working with 10 or 20 Blood Warriors. So right now, I'm gonna make the creative decision not to touch it, and I'm just gonna leave the mistakes where they are. Happy little mistakes that are gonna turn into creative opportunities for us down the line. I'm going to take a step away, get something to drink, and we'll come back when the model is properly dry and ready for shades. So we're going to have two colors we're using now. Agrax Earthshade for the entire model, and Raiklin Flesh Shade only for the skin tones, which is that Rackhearth Flesh. So I'm going to start with my Agrax Earthshade, and I'm going to work my way up from the bottom. You want to make sure you give your Agrax Earthshade a good shake before you pop it open. Get all the pig Ooh, pigmentation up to the top. <laughs> Looks like he might be might be time to start getting a new uh, piece of piece of blue tack there. Oh yeah, how embarrassing. Igor, put that on your shopping list, please. Next time we go to the hobby store, we need to get more blue tech for the cork. But master, everything shut down. Oh, that's right. We may have to wait then. It's okay. As you can see, I'm working on the armor because I know that the armor has already been painted and is left to dry. Also, these models have some very interesting cuts and scrapes and nicks molded onto the model. So I wanna make sure I get my Agrax Earthshade in there as much as possible. You also wanna get it in all of the chainmail bits. And when you work your way up to the helmet, just make sure it gets in all the cracks and crevices without putting so much that it pools. What we do not want is for it 
to pool in the helmet. okay if you get some of it on the on the uh, flesh because there's just gonna be so much but the majority of it you do want to get only on everything except the skin color do is I'm going to do a quick once over make sure it's not pooling anywhere like on the weapon you saw there check all the armor plates anywhere where there's like these little molded areas that the shade can pool in we want to push it around so it doesn't settle in any one spot oh don't forget all the yep all the armor all the arm and gloves arm pieces it's looking pretty good Now we're going to pop open our Raiklin Flesh Shade. Going to hit the face, fingers, and the skin. So Raiklin Flesh Shade has a nice red hue to it. So it will change the color of the entire skin area the more you put you can also mix it a little bit with that agrax earth shade to give your brass a nice red undertone looks pretty good and uh there you have it for part one of how to paint a corn bloodbound warrior See, this is what you don't want up here. You don't want it to pool like that. So just take your brush and drag it down. Once this guy is dry, you can move on with the second part of the tutorial, which would be highlighting of the miniature. But since we're trying to get our guys down on the table as fast as possible, this is the result you want to be at before you put this guy down to dry. And that will do it for part one. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this a tabletop standard video and we will see you in the next one what up players Gandalf the Grey of the Desma support Warboss Tay Studios for now more than ever Hobbiton is in desperate need of heroes heroes like Daniel Sprinkle Scrag Fist Brad 94H Pigs Dicey Guy Harry Smith, Play It Painted, and Logan Swanson.